So this is a live session uh, all about uh, art and art business. I'm here on a regular basis uh, and my heart is to uh, help artists uh, build sustainable uh, businesses, revenue streams, systems around their creativity so that they can thrive not only as people, individuals, but also as working artists. I love coaching. I love helping artists. I'm an artist myself. I understand the struggles. I've been there. I've know that it's a challenging profession uh, to find your way in and you know just to know what you need to uh, grow your art business i've done lots of business courses marketing i love uh, the whole uh, you know how do you promote your work and how do you use images and words to elevate your work that just uh, gets me excited because i know there's so much more possible for artists, if you know what and how you should be doing that. I have a website. If you haven't uh, seen my website yet, you're welcome to scoot over there after the session. I have resources. I have a regular podcast. I have worksheets uh, for you just to help you move and to grow and to get momentum so that you can um, set some structures up around your creativity. And then I have an online course. It's called The Working Artist. I know some of you in the audience have been alumni or are still in The Working Artist course. And uh, great that, uh, yeah, to have you in The Working Artist community and also just seeing results of students that have gone through this 12-week trajectory of setting up systems and knowing what building blocks and all those moving parts of turning what you're passionate about into a, a business because you're not only an artist you're also a business person and how do you bring that together and what you need to do and the working artist course goes live every year it's a 12-week course but there's a wait list so please feel free to join the wait list so that you can see how you can prepare to join the course in 2022 as an artist, creator, and maker, you know better than anyone else that you're not alone. That you are, there are thousands and thousands of artists making amazing art all over the world. That just, I just see all the artists that have joined in now and all the different art forms that people are making. And welcome if you've just joined in. I see Hendrine is here. I see, um, let's see, who I haven't welcomed yet. If I haven't welcomed you yet, hi. <laughs> um, but the, it's a, a large market. There's a lot of art, a lot of artists out there. So it's not a given that you're just going to find your audience and that you're going to sell your work. You need some kind of system, idea, strategy to get your art out there, to get your art seen and heard. And fortunately, this was very different uh, when I was at the Art Academy at the end of the 1980s. There was no such thing as the internet. You had to do everything by, you know, flyers, promotion, uh, by hand uh, to try and promote and to sell uh, to sell my art. And so I'm so uh, happy that we've made that transition to the digital age and that the internet offers so many uh, possibilities. And um, having that effective artist website has never been more important because that's where you can start differentiating yourself from other artists because your art can be amazing but if you you know not connecting that with the right kind of people people haven't had those experiences with your art especially now when the galleries are closed or are closing or still limited in uh, what they can offer having an effective artist website will make a huge difference in how people experience your art and is your art website effective is your art website giving you what you need is it elevating your art at a level that people can appreciate the effort your you know your time and your energy and your vision that you're putting into your art that's why i really believe that having that effective artist website is super important that i have uh, decided to call the month of may the artist's website month we're going to be focusing in the community on the artist website all the moving parts um, of an artist website and we're going to be starting today with that story how to use storytelling to tell share your vision share your heart to share your inspiration and uh, i'm going to share a little bit about the about me page before i invite the three artists to share their stories next week we'll be looking at navigation because not only having the right content, 
but being the tour guide of helping people around your website using the right buttons, using the right spacing. You can use colors, you can use white space, you can use the right wording. How do you get people to go where you want them to go? Because it's not just making your website and just wishing the best. You can take people on a journey. You are the tour guide actually around your gallery. And depending on the goal of your website, you can take people through navigation. You can bring them where you want them to go. That will be next week. Then we're going to look at elevating. How can you elevate your art on your website? How can you attract people to your website? Because you can have a beautiful website, but if no one's visiting, then you have a problem. All your energy, your time, you know, it's just such a pity that you're not getting that vis you know, visitors on your website. And how can you elevate your art? How can you use your social channels? How can you use other platforms to bring that traffic, the SEO, the Google, so you can have traffic on your website? So that is on May 19th. And then we're closing the month with a demonstration. I'm going to be demonstrating five artist websites, what works, what doesn't work. We'll be going through the websites and uh, you can see what functions. And also just take this time these next few weeks to have a look at a lot of artist websites and see what works. Have a look at your website. Have other people look at your website. So you can see is the flow there? Are people navigating? I'm going to share apps how you can actually heat map your website so you can see where people are moving their mouse. This is software that you can use so that you can actually see where people are clicking and it'll surprise you what people are clicking. What you think they, you know, it's obvious that that button is there that they're clicking. They aren't clicking it for a reason. Is it the wrong word? Is it the wrong color? Is it the wrong place on your website? So we're going to be looking at those artist website reviews. It's all in this community, the Help I'm Artist community at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday. There are replays available on my website, YouTube channel, and in the community. So you can go back and listen and um, enjoy the sessions if you can't make it live. Today is all about the about me. It's about your artist story, about telling your story, about your story is unique. There's no one else like you. And uh, the about me page is a wonderful opportunity to connect your art audience with your art and your vision behind your art, why you're making your art. The About Me page is one of the more important pages. There are many, many pages that you can use to um, communicate about your art. We start with the home page, the About Me page, which will look at a little bit your latest work, your contact page, and then we have shop, we have an FAQ, we have an archive with the bio resume, artist statements. We have so much content that you can put on a website through your blog, or maybe you have a podcast, you have a press page, you have a news tab. It's endless what you can do. And the whole idea is not to put everything on there, but to curate your content and really be intentional depending on the goal of your website. Studies have shown that art people that visit art websites start with a home obviously people have your url they've seen your business card they've seen your url somewhere they've come across you with uh, organic searching on uh, online or through your social channels and it's your home page that's sort of like the entrance way to your gallery to your space and from the home page usually people are thinking why should i be here why am i spending my time here who is this person if they haven't come across you before and Generally, people then go to the About Me page. So they go from the, your, the pressing your URL to the home and then to the About Me button. So it's an important page. That's where you really can introduce your heart, your vision, and your passion. And then we have the gallery or we have some kind of place where people can actually see your art because you can talk about it. People want to see it. And then there's the contact page. Those are four pages that are super important, when you, especially when you're just starting out. Keep it lean and mean, and these four pages are super important. And the whole idea is you can make start making a flow chart of your website. Where is it that you want people to go? And we'll have a look at that next week. But the About Me page, that's where people are going to go next. And make sure that it's interactive with your other pages. Just briefly before I invite the artist to share their about, their stories, um, Consider that um, it's a page where you can share in story form. You can really write a 
about why you're making your art, what inspires you, why did you choose this profession or why do you want to become a full-time working artist. Remember people, remember feelings, not facts. It doesn't have, you know, about me is not the whole resume. I was born in 1984, then I went to this primary school, this high school. That's not an about me page. You can put that on a resume. You can put that on um, a CV, which is another tab. You can put that in your footer if people are interested in that. But the about should be in story form. So you're adding description, emotion, and you're adding the differential layer. What makes you different from the other pastel artists or the acrylic artists or the fine artists? What inspires you? What motivates you? And then imagery, as you know, you have, the, of course, the words that you can use, not too many words, please, because people aren't reading, they are scanning. So they want to experience a full um, encounter with your art. So you have those words, have a clear heading, maybe a bullet point, use a quote, and then an image. And it's very uh, good to have an image where you're looking into the camera, not hiding behind your easel or, you know, getting really vague. Invest in a photo shoot where you can have a good portrait photo taken in a setting that can be, you know, uh, exciting and inspiring that share, tells your story in an image. So people can see, oh, this is, you know, this person, you show your personality and you um, share an image of yourself or more images. Bullet points really help breaking it down. So not a lot of text, keep it short that people can you know, really digest what you're saying. They're getting the gist of who you are. You can add your creative process also on the about page. So you're showing a little bit about how you, you know, especially if you have a specific technique that you're using, you can highlight that with images, with video even is a powerful um, content to use on the about page. And then you can add a quote, a quote from yourself or a quote of a, a commission that you've done or, you know, someone who's interacted with your art a quote within quote marks larger in heading setting H1 or H2 so people can see whoa you know someone else is a, it has an experience with your art that's really powerful to use and then add a CTA and a CTA is short for call to action no page on your website should be a dead end so that they read all about you and then there's nothing that you telling them, okay, now take action, go and look at my latest work or head over to uh, my shop. I have a, a special deal for you or go and have a look at my process. I have a new video out or have a new blog out. Go and read. On every page, there should be a button so that you have a loop on your website to keep them there as long as possible, which is great for your SEO because the SEO is the search engine optimization where you are telling the Google that this is an interesting and inspiring place where people want to stay. <laughs> so make use of um, those loops so people stay there as long as possible. And of course, then they have more chance to integrate, interact with your art. So that's just briefly about the About Me page. Um, we are here, of course, to listen to these stars and look at these stars because they're going to be joining me in the session. And I'd love to invite Coralie, if you're here, to uh, join me in the session and share your art stories. I'm uh, glad that you could join us uh, for this session. And Coralie, please just tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm going to lower myself a little bit here so that pe we, people can really see you. Tell us who you are, tell us where you are and what kind of art you're making. So um, I'm in London. Um, and I do a lot of illustrations and paintings as well, uh, mostly acrylic paintings. And my kind of subject is, is a lot of the outdoors and mountains, climbing, hiking, this, this kind of things, because this is what really like kind of lifts my heart. So I'm, I'm only like, I'm a full-time artist since only six months. Uh, so the new things for me, um, but it's been like, um, it's been a a, a a thing in the making for quite for quite a long time, basically. So, um, so I've always kind of uh, seen myself as a uh, both a creative and an explorer um, since since a child, and it's kind of like since these two seeds have been planted since a very long time. Um, 
so there's a I've I've kind of dug out some like little pictures from when I was a child. So there's a little me of me clambering on the rocks uh, when I was like four, and a picture of me like um, drawing since uh, I was seven or something like this. So since since forever, these two things have been in me, but it's not until quite uh, late in my twenties that these things literally kind of collided together. Um, so I knew that I would be doing some creative career, but things worked out in a way that I actually started doing architecture. So I had a career for like 12 years in architecture that I just then only left. Um, so that was great. And it just taught me a lot of things, but it was not kind of creative enough. And I've always drawn on the side and did some creative projects. Um, but without any real kind of direction, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I didn't quite find my voice until um, a quite decisive event happened in my life. Um, and that happened through rock climbing, which is something I discovered in my late twenties. And I instantly clicked with it because it brought like a lot of things together. It brought movements, sports, traveling, nature, and it just it just completely like fitted, just fitted who I was. Um, and seven years ago, eight years ago now, <laughs> I just lost track, um, I had an accident. Uh, I fell climbing outdoor and I broke my ankle. And that was after a very challenging um, nine months working really hard and I was really frustrated. I found myself for an entire summer on my couch, not being able to move. And I started drawing um, the, the accident and my feeling and everything that was going on. And suddenly, like, um, my art found a direction through that. I realized that I really like to draw about the outdoors, that I really like to draw about actually what really lift me up, like the experience of being outdoors. Um, and I also really reignited my passion for drawing and since then I started to just draw a lot more and really draw more about climbing just draw about mountains draw about the experience of being in the outdoor this this feeling of like expansion of discovering of exploring um and I've bit by bit I also I started so I started a lot with um so this is this is the book I've wrote so this this drawing this experience of this accident ended up being a 60 pages like graphic novel um which i've self-published uh online uh at the time uh so it's all like black and white uh so a lot of my work started in black and white um then i ended up starting doing this series of little postcard drawings um of mountains uh hiking it's like this is a, mi a mirror camera so i never know which way to go um and like surfing so i did quite a, a, a quite an extensive series of this drawing i started working with so that was already acrylic in a way because i'm using these pens pens which are like both very precise and do this very graphical aesthetic um and then i started to like add more color bit by bit and a couple of years ago just doing so this is climbing drawings with like working with the movement of climbers um and just adding some like really like punch of colors oops i'm just here yeah and i kept developing that style uh more and more growing in bigger formats so you can see behind i've just done like some bigger formats kind of uh, drawing of mountains and climbing just some big panoramic drawings and started like um going also like full just experimenting more and more with the colors as well and since like a couple since like, like two years i started to go kind in full colors um and my my work has kept developing here and there until until i kind of decided that i wanted to that's that that's um that call to kind of express that mission to kind of like express what i was 
experiencing through being in the outdoors um, just kind of grew to a point and that desire to express my creativity grew to a point that I decided to take the leap to like uh, just go just go full time um, experiencing just uh, experiencing with new experimenting with new media so I started also just painting uh, you can see a few of, of my painting I did this year there um, so yeah and I've also just experienced different scales so I've painted some uh, big murals as well this year which has been being very exciting uh, new type of work um, yeah so this is like my my story in a nutshell it's mm -hmm. kind of like it's been a lot of experimentation and going in different directions um and i'm i'm still like refining my message and my story and at the moment i really see my mission as bringing a lot of because we, we we spend a lot of time in front of of computer in a a bit disconnected to nature and i can really see like the benefit for for people like for the, nature and being in the outdoor and moving in the outdoor is bringing so much benefits to my life and i see my art as a mission to kind of 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 bringing that um experience and the memory of that experience to people um, through my art and that kind of feeling of grounding but also expansion that we experience in the outdoor outdoors through my paintings and through my drawings yeah. And I think yeah. the concept of storytelling, which is really like what was graphic novel is about, is also one of of like the important um, mission of my art because I think there's like just combine like just bringing storytelling through like painting and illustration is something very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is it. I'm a, very much at the beginning of my journey. And I'm really grateful for people like Sonia to bring really useful information to actually like just show that uh, art to that to the world and bringing the message to as many people as possible. So yeah, this is me. Oh, oh what an inspiring story, Coralie! How, how brave also to uh, follow your artist's heart because you had, I think, the security of a job as an architect. And then you made that switch. Can you just briefly tell us how, uh, what led up or how did you prepare yourself? to make that switch to be a working artist, actually uh, self-employed? I think, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that kind of like happened during the course of last year. It's been a while like that I couldn't find the fulfillment in my like, um, in my architect's career. And I've tried to shift things, like just do more creative things within the job. And I, I waited a little bit too long and at some point it kind of exploded. I was just like, okay, I've got enough of this. Mm -hmm. And I had a bit of like, basically like just saving on the side, but I've also been, so I've, I had an Etsy shop. I've been doing a little bit of commission. So it's been like kind of two years that was kind of going on in the background. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it, it wasn't like a full-time income to kind of do the switch, but I was also realizing that, um, if I was not focusing on my, all my effort and always just trying to do this at a little bit of a side hustle, like I would just never get kind of the momentum or giving it enough attention. Mm. So yeah, so it's been a bit a little bit of a bet on myself, mm. and because I've, I've I'm lucky enough to be able to kind of afford this to kind of take take the risk at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, it's been like it's been a little bit of a, <laughs> it's quite it's been quite tricky. Like I need to kind of prep myself a little bit every morning not to be like not to panic <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. um because it's like it's such a like it's it's such like basically there's so many opportunities that I can become very like distracting and I think this is what this is one of my biggest challenges is actually like I have just like I have a million of ideas but mm -hmm. I struggle sometimes to get focused to actually be like, okay, this is what we're focusing on this month, and we just we just do it, and we forget all the other things. Yeah. So this is probably like I think this is probably my biggest challenge because I do think there's a lot of opportunities, but sometimes pinpointing exactly like what we want to do and be okay with not doing the other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think everyone can relate to that. I don't know in the people that are listening. If you can relate, just give us a big yes in the comment area, and then we know that this is resonating with you. 
And if you have a question for Coralie, then please um, put it in the comment area. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to all of the questions, but we can be in this uh, community and uh, we can always uh, answer it in the replay as part. So I'm just going to, uh, let's just check Coralie and see if there's anything coming. And of course, you are going to be sharing your URL where people can find you. Uh, you can paste that in the comments section uh, once you get back to Facebook. So I see lots of yeses. <laughs> I think we can all relate to that uh, overwhelm. That's uh, that so much possible, especially in these times, that it can actually paralyze us a little bit. Any questions for Coralie before I invite uh, Anya to uh, this session? Lots of thanks. Uh, just wait a second and see. I think uh, we're all good. Carly, please uh, um, add your URL where people can find you uh, in the comment area. And uh, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to share your story. And uh, okay. look, looking forward to uh, see how you're going to develop your beautiful art and the building your art business. <laughs> yeah. I have to see one question from Angelique. We're going to put it here. Do you have a plan to work towards your goals? Are you a planner? So I've been, I've been having a plan to make a plan for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really kind of I started like actually last week I finally got to that so I actually like got myself a little folder and I had like a just because I'm doing I'm trying to do like both painting illustration and murals so I've been like okay this is this this and this and I'm trying to move a little bit the needle in the three of them and I kind of started to um, list out some goals for next year. So, for example, there's some things which has like, um, you know, get to a certain point to the, sh like a certain income to the shop. And then it's like, okay, so this is the people I'm going to try to contact. And this is like, for example, just, I don't know, write to like 100 climbers on Instagram, write like to this climbing shop, see if they want to like just sell some prints or some t-shirts. And so these kind of things, um, I've been, for example, when it comes to the painting, I obviously I can see a lot of these things working really well in like a, a sh some like a private clients in chalets in the Alps or things like this, you know. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna contact some like some interior designer in the Alps, like or in the Pyrenees, and actually just present them my work, see if they want to like sell to their clients. Uh, I would like to do some like some talks and some workshops as well. So I'm trying to contact mountains and climbing festival to like offer my my services. So it's like a couple of examples of a couple of goals I've listed for this year and I'm just starting to brainstorm like how I can do this. And then I need to put this in a calendar and do it. <laughs> <laughs> Next step. <laughs> I love the plan to make a plan. But uh, great, to, great to hear, Carly, also very practical. I think I see there are a few more questions. If you can also just uh, dive in the comments once uh, we are uh, uh, invite the next guest feel free to answer those questions in the comment area great thank you yeah yeah, yeah. thank you <laughs> and uh i'm going to invite anya up now anya hello <laughs> hi Sonia. Hey, everyone well, welcome to uh this art story session so good to have you here and uh, that you are willing and open to share your art story uh, please tell us who you are, where you are, what kind of art you're making. Feel free to share. Um, I'm Anya. I'm based in London. Um, I was born in London, but then moved to Brazil, Portugal. Um, I'm half Indian, half Dutch, so <laughs> quite a picture. A blend. <laughs> I, I consider myself a, a bit of a mongrel and... I'm quite at home at London because there's so many nationalities and we're so mixed. Um, yes, I moved from to London 15 years ago. Um, and I s started, I've, I've always had an interest in drawing from a young age. Uh, I was always trying to draw legs and 
things from life. Uh, when I was 14, I started painting with oils and doing uh, still lifes. I was a lot into arts, including uh, ballet. I was in the National School of uh, Ballet in Lisbon. Uh, I was living in Portugal then and I was studying piano. But I also liked math and I followed engineering. Hey. <laughs> Yes, so Yay. I went on and I worked in IT. Now and then I would get out a sketchbook or join um, an art class, maybe at night, uh, and then I would stop. I always felt uh, I'm missing a bit the creativity. It was something underlying that was just there in the background. Uh, then I have, I have two children, so I had my first son, uh, here and I we then moved to London um, my parents had a serious car accident and I life changed I at that time I was looking for a job in IT and to go back to work after having my first child so I had to go back to Lisbon and uh, help my mum and then I had another child and it seemed like I had missed quite a lot of time without working in IT and you get quite obsolete and I, and I would have had to travel. So I stayed at home and became a full-time mum. There was always that part of me, I can't just be a mum. And I thought, hmm, let me slowly see if there's anything in it for um, in the art. So... When my children were young, I went to um, a painting class, first watercolors and oils, uh, once a week. When they both went to primary school and at a suggestion of a teacher, I then joined an art foundation, uh, which I really, really loved. And I thought, wow, I have to do this. This is my passion. And I had classes on art history, life drawing, which I'd never done before. And yes, mm -hmm. I was sold and I thought I must have a go. I'd, I'd sold a couple of paintings. Um, so I finished my art foundation, um, but I still felt, I felt um, dissatisfied, which is sort of the story of my life. I. I when I was a teenager, I used to throw my art in the bin and it was quite temperamental. <laughs> uh, so I felt dissatisfied in that I wanted to learn how to paint the fall of light and improve my drawing so I could express my vision and what was in my head and what I was observing better. So I went to study um, classical fine art atelier and I spent mostly part-time. I spent quite a lot of time uh, honing my drawing skills and my painting skills. And yes, I, I finished that in 2017. Um, I consider myself an emerging artist. I've been, I do some teaching um, and I mainly work commissions and I sometimes do a little bit of work on my own. Um, portraits, landscapes, uh, I set up my own still lives and, and sometimes I paint uh, what is in my head, it sort of just comes out. Um, yes, I, I am in Sonia's uh, working artist course and yeah. it's been great. I, I must say I, it is a difficult profession and Maybe I, I've done lots of things. There are lots of things I can improve and I've got to work on. And I realized last year and the pandemic didn't help. I, I got um, a bit, uh, let's say, down on, on my art. I wasn't producing. I don't think I took advantage of selling on the internet. I, I was feeling like, oh, I've got to change my profession. Um, and I've joined the Working Artist course, and that's helped me see stuff in my mind. Uh, 
I've had to work on and I, I feel more positive and, and hopeful now. Um, yes, yeah, so. So the art behind you, Anya, that is your work. If people want to get an idea of what your art looks like. Yes, everything that's behind me, actually, I did during my training. Mm -hmm. So it's um, quite classical. So the portrait is the first portrait I did. Uh, let me see if you can see a little bit. Uh, when I was studying uh, at Lara. Uh, yes. That's good, yeah. yeah. So we start with a lot of drawing and we go painting black and white. And then only right at the end do you paint with oils. But I, I do feel I need to express myself and break the rules and uh, build a body of work. I think I've been go working from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. And I find, uh, personally, I find commissions a, a little stressful because it's the expectation of the client. Mm -hmm. And that stress sort of slows me down, which it's not profitable. No. <laughs> it, it, I wasn't enjoying, uh, in the state I was, I wasn't really enjoying anymore painting, but now I'm, I feel very different and I'm enjoying just putting on the paint mm -hmm. and what happens. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, you have an, I know that you have an exhibition uh, now that everything's sort of opening up in uh, England, uh, just tell us briefly a little bit about uh, what's on the uh, calendar for you. Oh, well, we opened up uh, in the UK uh, where, uh, I mean, cafes open up so that you can eat inside uh, on the 17th of May. I will have some three paintings landscapes uh, hanging in the cafe. They're very small and um, I just went and I, it's a local cafe, I just went and I spoke to the owner who was actually very keen and I didn't even realize he trained as a photographer so he was also quite artistic. Here is one of them. I had a problem with my, the backing which I'll have to glue. Uh, yeah, so that is one of the paintings, but I'll have three more little landscapes, uh, mm. painted plein air. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, so I hope to promote that uh, a bit. I, I've also been working on, I almost finished a commission, which has taken me ages. It's a full body commission, full body portrait. I can't show it all, but I've I've gone back into enjoying layering the paint and see what happens. I I love oils and looking at the chroma, how bright, and yes, I'm I'm so happy to find the joy. And I'll just show a sneak peek. Yes, please. Uh, just uh, please yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know if you can. It's silly, but I've just quite enjoyed. <laughs> scraping down and this is a, a number of layers. Um, yeah, so I'm having fun at, with a commission. Yeah. Is it from a photo or did you have a live sitting? It's from a photo and it's been really difficult because the photo I think was distorted. So mm. <laughs> it took me to get it right. I think if it's a a full body portrait the likelihood of distortion is even greater, especially as the amateur. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you tilt your phone, uh, you know the feet were very small and yeah. a long time to to get it right. Um, although I paint figuratively, uh, generally I, that's not really where I think my heart goes. I'm a little uh, surreal. I, uh, I'll, I'll just show a painting I've set up some time ago, which I'm going to go back into. It's a bit dark, but this was a this is a statue who belonged to my friend. But I always pictured it in a setup, and the rest 
is just something from imagination. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll be putting in a bit of light. That, that's just to give you an idea. Of, yeah, cool. I'm not uh, purely figurative. Uh, for me, it's always about the image at the end and not just what we see and and mm. what it's going to feel like. Um, Yes, and I'm trying to keep a sketchbook. Yes. <laughs> I'll just show my very sketchbook with a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. keep some, sometimes ideas just pop into my head. I want to make um, keeping a sketchbook uh, part of my artist routine, uh, which I haven't done yet, but I want to wake up and use my sketchbook and also read more art history because I do think it, it feeds into our ideas as well and, and who and how we want to paint. So here is a hand and a rose uh, uh, floating and it's called, what is it called? Oh, leaving me. But I've just got a number of ideas. If eventually, I want to focus on just a body of work, which I've never done. Mm. Uh, well, I look forward to seeing that, Anya, <laughs> see how your uh, body of work emerges. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Started. That's, my problem is like Coralie, is I, there are days where I feel overwhelmed and I've got lots of work that isn't quite unfinished and I need to finish it and there are just lots of things to do i mean if, if you think about it we have to be so many things we learn how to write uh, photograph our work uh, promote um, i'm not that comfortable promoting so i'm out of my zone mm. i'm out of my comfort zone this is my first life <laughs> yay <laughs> my oh. remind look at the green dot and <laughs> Look at the camera. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Anya. I'm so proud of you. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, really I think it's it is a tough profession. I think, uh, yeah, you have to believe in yourself, and and I do. It's a paradox because I was painting to try and sell, but then I stopped enjoying it, uh, and it wasn't me. So I'm trying to pull that in enjoy the process and otherwise you get burnt out and yeah. and you give up or yeah. <laughs> it, it, somehow it's not going to work it's you're trying to sell but then i it, i think it works against us but we'll see i i feel more hopeful now well, good to hear. i hope you guys are enjoying this session i just love hearing artist story i think the stories there's so much we can learn from each other but also relatable because we're often you're on your own or you, you know you're just making your art and we all have those ups and downs in our art uh, careers so uh, i think it's always just so lovely to hear what everyone is busy with and uh, you know just thanks for, uh, for sharing your story hi guys uh, my name is Hendrin. i'm a potter from south africa my studio is really dark today i have put up four lights but i see it's still dark so i'm really sorry <laughs> Um, so uh, I've been a potter for the last nine years and I've only been doing it professionally as an artist selling my work for about four and a half and as a business three years mm -hmm. and when I started in pottery I was quite skeptical because I had tried so many different art mediums and I could never really find one that find one that I did drawing and sketching and uh, painting and origami and when I found pottery, it was like a light bulb went off and I was like, I'm home because there were so many things that I could do. And there's so many different techniques and ways that you could go. And because I'm a bit of a scatterbrain, it was absolutely amazing because I could experiment. So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey of where I started. Uh, when I started pottery, I did evening classes with a friend of mine. And at that time, I was working in the hospitality industry hours and I needed a bit of a way to express myself. So I did some cartoon drawings just to have some comical fun. I needed to have a way to, I don't know, 
my work was so stressful, both physically and mentally, and cartooning just kind of gave a little bit of an outlet. And I started cartooning, and the cartoons made their way onto my pottery when I started first. You can see I was a newbie pottery potter because it's quite thick. <laughs> but uh, here's, uh, here's one of the first ones. Because it's here. There we go. And um, so this is underglaze painting. What I did is I etched it out, then I added some underglazes. And uh, I love the fact that the pop of the color, but the natural color of the stoneware clay, I absolutely love that. But um, yeah, so it was a nice and creative outfit. I love the fact that it looks like a sticker, but it's not a sticker. I've painted it on. But those potters know that underglazes are not the same as um, acrylics and oils. So time to get that flat color. A lot of potters like the fact that the colors, that the clay shines through the underglazes. I don't like that. I want flat popping colors. So that's kind of where I started, very quirky. And um, here's a plate that I did last year, actually. So this is a baobab. Mm -hmm. And I've used oxides and uh, etched it out. And then also put manganese oxide in and just put transparent on it. I the fact that the stoneware clay shines through. So I'm quite a conundrum. I love my bright colors, but when it comes to, uh, to my more traditional works, not the comical ones, I love earth tones, browns, greens, a lot of dark colors, because I also like Coralie, I love nature. And living in South Africa, we're quite fortunate, lots of nature to go around. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when I started with wheel work, um, you can see here I was experimenting. So this is white, inside and I triple dipped it and at that time you're using communal kiln so when you triple dip you got to make sure that the glaze doesn't drip so if it sticks to the kiln you've got a problem so I only triple dipped it to the top <laughs> but I love that and um, this was a one of the ones that I did on the wheel one of the first ones and it's really heavy as you can see there's a lot of reaction going on there with the glazes and this is the first time where I was taught you know as a potter write things down because I've never again been able to replicate this glaze and this reaction with the oxides and because I didn't write it down so since then I've always written down exactly what I'm doing so that I can remember you know next time if you want this reaction that is what you must do. So I mainly do functional and decorative art, but mainly functional. And um, I do work mainly on commission. But in 2019, I sustained a chest injury. And it's kind of the doctor said to me, uh, I may not miss. Ooh, there's sound in the background. I don't know. <laughs> um, the doctor said to me that I might not uh, be able to practice my art for quite a while and a while turned into a whole year and it was a very scary time for me i didn't know how i was going to carry on because by this time i'd already started my business and i was enjoying it and you know, working on commissions you do quite a few different things and so my mind was all over the place and uh, what do you do when you start panicking um well i uh, turned to google and um <laughs> I Googled for about a month doing some research about things that how could I possibly work around this because if I can't practice pottery, I can't lift things, I can't work on my pottery wheel, how am I going to um, get this? So one of the last days I remember being very frustrated and I said to myself, just look online and figure out what you're going to do. If you can't make pottery, just try one more time and look through some articles and do some research. And um, I stumbled upon this article about 3D modeling and design and then 3D clay printing. And that feeling I had when I first started pottery, that's what happened when I read this article about 3D clay printing. And I was just like, wow, there's so much that you can do with 3D clay printing, but you have to learn 3D design. And I am not really tech savvy. I can do a little bit of Illustrator, a little bit of Photoshop, at that point, I couldn't edit on the computer either. And I said to myself, if you can teach yourself the software, you can maybe move forward and look at 3D clay printing and see if that's something that you could possibly look at. And so I started 
keeping myself a square. I was um, quite scared in the beginning. I pretty much dove in and I think the only way that I pushed myself to get through it was the fact that I wasn't sure what I was going to do as a potter and this was a way for me to create my pottery, create a visual representation of my pottery so that if I couldn't make it, I could you know, ask someone else to make it for me and they could see exactly what I wanted. And amazingly enough, through learning the software, I was um, do, you know, I've gotten people that have asked me to do prototyping for them and make 3D models for them for products that they want to make. So it's kind of opened up this whole stream of um, work that I didn't think of before. Initially, it was just for me to, to learn how to use the software and to create my art. And um, once I conquered my fear of learning the tech side of things, I tried uh, 3D clay printing on someone's printer here in South Africa. And the thing that I fell in love with instantly. And um, yeah, so I bought my 3D printer, my clay printer. I bought it two weeks ago, but I got an email this morning saying that the country where it's shipping from, they haven't shipped it out yet due to what's happening in the world right now. So I have no idea when I'm going to be getting it, but I'm still excited regardless. But it's on its way. <laughs> it's on its way. Yeah. And um, so one of the challenges I'm, is that I'm worried people will perceive my art as mass production because I come from the pottery background where you, everything's handmade, you know, you leave fingerprints, you know, everything is um, handmade is always better. We always used to say that. But I was put in that position where I had an injury and I couldn't make things handmade. So I had to turn to technology to help me. But the process is still the same. If you like the clay printer, if you think of a syringe, you put the clay in the the syringe push the clay out through the syringe comes out the bottom and then it's like the coiling method how we would in pottery would make the old school pots that does the same thing and um there's a lot of technique that is that goes with it uh the 3d design obviously the printing and then the bisque fire and the glaze fire and uh i'm really worried that people will uh think it's mass produced so i i really need to think <laughs> wisely about how i'm going to uh tackle this problem so that they see that there's no effort behind it. It's not just me pressing, pressing the button and saying, you know, print. Yeah. So yeah, big challenge for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We need to change their, that mindset too, you know, because that's that interesting that using technology and your art form, you found ways to work, uh, you know, make it work for you. And I don't know people that are listening, of course, there are people that are making reproductions that is also mechanical, that it's a digital file or making digital art that are experiencing similar uh, maybe objections or uh, thoughts that they think, well, you know, the, the audience may think this is not real art. But if you have that, then please uh, put it in the comments. Uh, Tell us uh, about, a little bit about your um, inspiration. You said you love nature, the organic forms. If you were to make the ideal uh, pot, what, are the, what would it look like, uh, Hendrine? Well, I, I do love, um, I know with my cartooning, it seems very abstract, but I do like uh, intricate des design. What excites me about the 3D printer is that I can make really intricate designs using the coiling method and the way that the nozzle can go and the shapes that you can make is, I'm so excited uh, about that. So, um, you know, you want to bring nature with it. Clay in itself is already, clay is obviously, uh, they put some things in it to make the clay uh, hold and you, you can fire it in the kiln. But I love the fact that um, the clay is so versatile and that you can make with it and with the printer i'm just able to actually bake breaks bake <laughs> bake kiln <laughs> i can actually break some boundaries with regards to what i traditionally think you should do in pottery and you know there's so many things that i can do now where before i couldn't and that to me is extremely exciting and bringing um nature and bringing um my glazing and the techniques that i use um bringing that in, the, all the skills that I've gained over the past few years. I've, I was under the, the guide, Rhoda Henning. She's an amazing potter here in South Africa. Mm. And she kind of took me under her wing and she kind of fast-tracked my pottery learning curve. So I'm so thankful to her. That's why I'm, 
I, I feel I can be quite versatile. I can paint, I can glaze. So I, I'm happy that I have, have all of that behind me and so thankful to her that she, she helped me with that. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to add, Sonia, when you asked, you know, why would we like to share our stories? And I just felt it's important as artists, some, some times are not going to go our way. We're going to, you know, there's bumps are going to come in the road and we just kind of have to, Go over them. I mean, the route you take might not necessarily be the one you want to take. It may be the harder route, but for me, the harder route worked out and I'm so happy that I took it. It's It's been two years now and I still haven't completely finished the process, but I'm okay because I'm just, I'm trying and I'm hanging in there as hard as it is. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Good for you, Hendrine, for not giving up and you found a way, you know, you did get went that extra mile and you've you know using technology now to help you so that's a very amendable i uh commendable i have a uh, see that uh, angelique has a suggestion uh henry you could put your fingerprint somewhere to make it yes uh, <laughs> signature yes i've actually thought of things like that like how i could i'm um, change it and obviously print a few things and together so i build build a structure it's not just one printed printed part. So I'm, I'm excited that I can do that. I have however, um, recovered from my injury, but I've just, I feel I can't go back now I'm on this journey. And I just wanted to share with everyone before I forget, I am launching my new course on Skillshare tomorrow. It's 3D design for beginners, because when I was learning how to 3D design, it was really difficult. A lot of the tutorials were based around engineering and parts and coming from an artistic background and you know i, I kind of structured my classes to be be more for the everyday person people who may want to do it as a hobby or just start so i'm launching that tomorrow so i'll put my links in the feed and you guys can go on instagram if you like and um send me a, a message and i can send you the link for skillshare so i'm really excited about Whoa. that and it's been talking so fast today my so much on my mind <laughs> congratulations for uh, launching that first course Definitely, guys, go and have a look also at uh, the URL of uh, Henry uh, on, on Instagram and put it in the comment area, Henry, when you pop back into the Facebook session. Yeah. Any more questions that uh, you may have for uh, Henry, then just pop it in the comments. Sonia, <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much for, you know, allowing us to have this chat today. I'm listening to the other two girls with Anya and Carly, you know, we all kind of, it's a comfort zone and it's nice to see that there's a lot of us in the same boat. It's lovely. <laughs> Good for you for taking up the challenge and <laughs> that way to now you have an audience of artists, but this could also be your audience of art lovers, people that admire pottery and you could have these live sessions that goes for all of you in the audience and also that uh, did the live session. It's so powerful to share your story. People are, you know, it's, it, we all have different, uh, uh, points of vision and lifestyles and culture and uh, and I think people just come alive with stories and being able to share uh, what makes you tick and what you're passionate about so definitely uh, add that to your messaging and also on your website and a way in communication so um, yeah. it's a pleasure that you were here <laughs> thank you so much for having me I see all the comments that's why I keep looking down I'm like mm, what are people saying no, just need to read it. <laughs> I see, I'll put one out for you. <laughs> we'll highlight. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> and we have another one for you. Oh, no, that's the same one. This one. <laughs> I don't have my goggles on my glasses, so I'm like, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Oh, Dina thanks so much, guys. <laughs> it's, uh, Dina says, yeah, it's great to hear uh, everyone's story, the ups and downs. We all have our struggles. And it's not all smooth sailing, but it's so worth it pressing through and coming out uh, the other end and uh, continuing expressing. So, Hendrine, thank you. Make sure you put those URLs in the comments there and uh, go and check out uh, Hendrine's art. And also, when she gets her printer, uh, what the 3D prints are going to be looking like. So that will be exciting. Yeah. Engineering and art, technology and art. And she is a front runner. There, is not, there aren't many people doing this, so she really is brave going out on the limb and uh, you're doing this, especially in South Africa. So if there's anyone listening out there, <laughs> go and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
And Thanks, Sonia. I love you. <laughs> we'll be in touch, Henry. Thank you for coming. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Anya, Coralie, and Hendrine, we give you an applause. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we'll be seeing each other next time.